Okay, in this video, we're gonna be looking at some comments that Mighty Mouse, the GOAT of MMA, Demetrius Johnson made about Anthony Joshua versus Francis Ngannou over in MMA. And then towards the end of the video, we're also gonna look at a clip of Chael Sonnen talking about his fight that he nearly had with Francis Ngannou and just laugh at that for a bit, okay? So let's get right into it. First of all, if you are new around the world of MMA, like let's say you joined MMA and started watching the sport, becoming a fan of the sport around the time of 2020 when whatever that was, was going on, then you might not actually know that much about Mighty Mouse Demetrius Johnson. He is one of the absolute goats of the sport. In my opinion, he is the goat of the sport. Tony, I'm looking at you, mate. Purely because of his creativity of striking, his, uh, his record in championship defenses in the UFC, but because of contract disputes that he had with the UFC when he moved over to one championship, the UFC have essentially tried to delete him from the record books of MMA. So if you're just recently joining us in the UFC and in the world of MMA since 2020, I mean, Demetrius has been over at one championship the entire time since then, and the UFC just won't mention his name. But He's got a phenomenal, phenomenal career and a really fun YouTube channel. And on that YouTube channel, he made some remarks about Anthony Joshua and Francis Ngannou and what would happen if those two were to fight each other again over in MMA. And I was actually pretty surprised by this. And I think a lot of us in the MMA world were. A lot of us that have been fans of MMA and fans of DJ for a long time were, were really surprised by this. So. DJ's doing his YouTube channel, the conversation comes up, and I'll, I'll let's bring it up right now and I'll just quote him so we can see exactly what he was saying. So DJ says, does Anthony Joshua beat Francis Ngannou in an MMA fight? He goes, I think he does. It would be another striking match. <clears throat> it would be another striking match. Anthony Joshua understands his distance. He understands the void. He has better hands than Francis and can make Francis whiff and miss again. Unless Francis is going to change his tactic, go in, clinch him, wrestle him, Joshua would win. AJ is very athletic, he's smaller, he's more limber. I think he'll be able to stuff a shot and be able to give it to Francis and Garner. That seems kind of wild to me. Now, DJ did bring up the wrestling in that, but I think he sort of underplayed it a little bit. He talked about how Anthony Joshua, just off pure athleticism, would be able to stop the takedowns and sort of lull him back into that punching match in the void. But we have seen this through time and tested methods across all of combat sports. The more that you start to introduce different tools and different tactics, all of a sudden there's more to think about. And when we look at uh, when we look at Francis Ngannou's fight against, let's say Cyril Gane, yeah? Francis Ngannou's fight against Cyril Gane was more of a kickboxing match in the first two rounds rather than just a boxing match. And while Anthony Joshua does have fantastic hands as we've seen now, and when you take away a lot of Francis's tools and just give him that one-to-one -one boxing matchup, Francis Ngannou does seem to lull himself into the exact same stance throughout the entire fight with the exact same move set and doesn't seem to have that much to offer. However, when you look at Francis versus Cyril Gane, Cyril Gunn is a kickboxer, a Muay Thai fighter, is, is used to way more tools. And Francis handled those first two rounds standing up very, very well. So I think when you start to introduce the leg kicks to, to help manage the range and the distance control, Francis would suddenly start to work on that void area that Demetrius is talking about so much. And then of course you talk about implementing the wrestling. Look. Demetrius Johnson might be able to shuck off the first one or the second one, but Francis can keep coming at him with the wrestling. Again, look at the Cyril Garn fight. Francis was able to implement his wrestling over the last 15 minutes of that fight with terrible knees, like horrible knees that needed work done to them after that fight. If Francis Ngannou comes into this one healthy, he will be able to manage the void with the leg kicks like he did in the Cyril Garn fight and then work with the wrestling as well, which he has improved on quite a bit. Lastly, the thing that I think we are sort of forgetting here the most is Francis's ability to adjust after a loss. Look at Francis after the first Stipe fight. He almost had the same look on his face after the first Stipe fight as he did after the Anthony Joshua fight. That, oh my God, I can't believe that just happened to me moment. 
But Francis was able to come back and implement such a better game plan to in the second Stipe Miocic fight. If Francis Ngannou is the same guy that lost, learnt, came back stronger that he is today, we, and, and we can assume he would be, he's older, he should be more mature with a little bit more you know, mental experience in the fight game. Why can't he come back with a far more clearer picture of what he did wrong in the first Anthony Joshua fight with all of his schools, all of his skills available to him to take into that fight? I think there was a rematch between the two of them and it was in MMA. I think Francis Ngannou would school him. And then let's just be honest here. Look at Anthony Joshua's legs. Just look at them. They're skinny, skinny, skinny boy legs. And that's fine. Boxers don't need thick ass legs, right? I mean, he needs to have that fluidity on the feet. They don't train the legs that much. He's got skinny little legs. When Francis Ngannou kicks one of them, it might just snap in half like a stick. Look at Francis throwing this kick. <laughs> he just knocked that dude over. That dude is about as big as one of Francis's legs. So it's very worrying for Anthony Joshua if he did come into the MMA cage, if he did come over to UFC and actually fight Francis in the UFC. I don't think it would end well at all. Last thing that I wanted to share with you all and just have a little bit of fun with here at the end of the video, check out this clip from Chael Sonnen, right? Up, but they don't get involved. They're over my show. I can hear them yelling at us, but they don't actually come over. So now we've turned and squared up. I know the same thing about fighting as everybody else watching this knows about fighting, which is whatever your father taught you. And my dad did not tell me I had to wait to defend myself. He told me when they're within arm's reach, it has begun. But Daniel, I don't want this thing to jump off. I got an ego too. I'm looking, I got these glasses. I'm thinking about he's gonna crack me with these glasses. Francis, I'm doing the math too. Like I got an ego too. You duck John Jones. I fight John right now. And I might have to fight you right now. Like this is going through my mind. But my son is about 12 feet away. And he's in a pair of gloves that Nate Diaz had given him. It was a Nate Diaz versus Jake Paul. Nate had given him a pair of gloves. So my son, my son's over. He's shadow boxing. Francis doesn't know he's there. I said, Francis, not now. And he lets me know this is happening now. I've been looking for you for a while. And I took my hand and I, and I just went like this to my son. I said, not in front of my son. Francis looks over and sees my son. Not a word did he say. Respect. He understood the code. He dropped he's it gentleman. right there. Chael Sonnen thinks that he's going to get into it with Francis and got it. Look, all credit to Chael. Yeah, he did. He did fight John Jones at one point, but that was years ago when Chael was on a hell of a lot of steroids. I mean, I'm sure he's still on a bunch of steroids now. He is out of competition. He can do whatever the hell he wants. But I mean, Chael is an old man. And the fact that he's telling this story like he's in a parking garage with concrete floors and he's squaring up to Francis Ngano and he's willing to throw down with Francis just as long as his kid isn't there. Chael, brother, I know you're the king of I can't let you get close, but he's always going to be the king of just posturing on the internet. <laughs> It's being like, I'm not scared of anybody. Undefeated, never lost a round. Uncle Chael, never changed, Chael. Thank you for giving us those moments. But if you, if you and Francis get locked into a room, Chael, we all know that there's only one person coming out of that room. That's all we got for today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Let me know down there in the comments, Francis Ngannou, Anthony Joshua, MMA rules. Who do we see winning that? I would think it was actually a bit of a foregone conclusion, but here we have the absolute goat of the sport talking about it might be Anthony Joshua. I mean, I'm not going to say that I have a better mind for MMA than Demetrius Johnson does. That is ridiculous. But I would think Francis would win that fight just like he would win the Chael Sonnen fight nine times out of 10. But you let me know your thoughts down there in the comments. And of course, I will see you all in the next video.